Hi guys, and a warm welcome to lesson 27 of my uh, basic programming series. As I always say, these lessons are designed for those who have no previous knowledge in programming at all, and are designed, <coughs> excuse me, they're designed to be used from lesson one all the way upwards. You get progressively better, or you should be getting better anyway, <laughs> as you get further up. Uh, let me just say a quick hi to Bill, who uh, is a retired gentleman who contacted me regarding these lessons. He's starting to learn, and he's downloaded his own basic compiler. Uh, I've put a link in for a couple of compilers in the uh, description on the site in the lesson, in lesson 27. So pop along there if you want some useful links and what have you. Okay, with that out of the way, <clears throat> I thought that we would do something a little different today. And what we're doing in this lesson is to take an input of character or characters and convert them to Morse code. Sounds simple enough, but there's a little bit of logic to it. There's, there's a couple of new statements in here that I'll go through that you haven't come across before, but generally speaking, the statements don't need a lot of explaining. Just the logic, really, that needs a little bit of explaining, so... Uh, this will hopefully be a short video, guys. Okay, so uh, here is the flowchart for the program that I've, the, uh, that we've written. And as you can see, we start off and, and we load in, in this box here, we load uh, the Morse code symbols into uh, array, which is going to be M$, M standing for Morse. <coughs> The next box we come along, we input the word to be converted, so the word can contain a sentence, spaces, we're allowing punctuation of commas and periods, and everything will be converted to uppercase, so we're asking for uppercase letters, but if someone types in a lowercase, then we'll convert that to uppercase letters. We're allowing spaces to, and the numbers 0 to 9. So here we change the letters to uppercase, and here we start a loop to check the input from the first to the last letter. So if we've put in a sentence that contains 15 letters, or 15 characters, shall we say, um, then it will run through 15 times. If we've put one in that, that has 25 characters, then it will run through for 25 times. Okay, let me just uh, scroll this down a little bit for you, so we can get to the meat of the program, which is there, really. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog in the throat this morning. Okay, so we're starting the loop there, and then we're coming down and we're asking, has the last character been checked? Well, obviously, if it's the first character through, then it won't be, unless, of course, you just put a single a single character in. Um, so, no, we go down to no. Is the character in the permitted range? Okay, so what this does here is this checks that the character is equal to a space, or a comma, or a period, or it's in the range 0 to 9, or it's in the range capital A to capital Z. And we do this by comparing the ASCII values uh, of the character that's input. We don't actually do a, 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 is it equal to A, is it equal to B, so on and so forth. We just check the ASCII values. If you remember a few lessons back, we did some work with ASCII tables. There will be a link in the description on the site to an ASCII table, so you'll be able to refer to that if you're at all struggling. But anyway, is the character in the permitted range? If it's not in the permitted range, we add one to the character counter. It says there, check next character, but it's, we're really looking at the next character, and we go back here and ask if the last character's been checked. No, so we go through and ask again. <coughs> is the character in the permitted range? Okay, so let's assume that the character is in the permitted range. What happens then? Okay, so what we do then is we look up the Morse code for the character. Now, the Morse code is stored in M$. All M$ does is store the Morse code for A, B, C, D, E, whatever, all, all the characters that we're allowing anyway, okay? And it's storing them in such a way that if, well, we know that capital A is ASCII character 65, so <clears throat> what we're saying is that in ASCII character, uh, sorry, in M$65, that will be, that will hold the symbols, the Morse code symbols, for a capital A. In M$66, for instance, which is ASCII, ASCII value for capital B, 
that will hold the Morse code symbols for capital B, so on and so forth. In position 32, in M$32, that will hold um, the space, so on and so forth. We, we've, we've added them in so that they are totally sort of like parallel, if you like. Uh, each each value matches up. <coughs> and then, when we've looked up the Morse code for the character, what we do then is we go to add the Morse code to the output string. The output string here in this program is Z$. So what we're doing is just adding that to Z$, going back round again, add one to the count, check the next character in the string that we've typed in, go through the loop again, come back down here, check it's in the range, if it is, look up the character, and then add that to the end of Z$. So Z$ would be equal to, if it was the first character, A, the, the, the Morse code for A, and then this time it would be equal to the Morse code for B, or whatever the second character was, <coughs> so on and so forth, until we reach the end of the input. At the end of the input, it branches off down here because we've checked the last character on and, and sorted it out. So we go down here and then we just simply print out the output string and we go to end and end the program. So as you can see, it's quite simple. Um, you can see that th that's the actual flowchart. As I say, this flowchart is listed on the site. <coughs> Links to the site will be put in the description as well. Um, so that's really straightforward. So let's have a look at the program and see what we're doing here. Okay, this is the program. As you can see, line 10, we're letting Z$ dollar equal a null string so we can actually, we've got something to refer to so that we can add to it. Okay, this is something a little bit different. We've used dim statements before, but not dim 32 to 90. Seems a bit odd on first <laughs> appearances, but 32 to 90 is the range of the characters that we're going to be using. 32 being a space and 90 being a capital Z. We don't use all of these because some of these are punctuation that we don't use. But we, we have no facility for doing just the uh, to dimming M$ dollar to just having the numbers that we want. So we, this is the, the short, the quickest way of doing it or the one that uses the less memory at least anyway. <clears throat> so 32 is going to be equal to space. I've already said that 65 will be equal to... Uh, capital A uh, and 90 will be equal to capital Z and so on and so forth. Here we're just simply creating a loop which goes through these values which are dimmed in M$ dollar, and it lets every value equal a space. Quite simply why we're doing that is because some of them do contain punctuation uh, and what have you, so we're just, we're just blanking the whole, the whole string off initially. Now uh, what we're doing here in, in, in 60 and 70, again, this is all explained in, in the lesson, so I'd, I'd prefer you to look at that rather than listen to me rabbiting on here. But um, we're going to run the program in a couple of seconds. Uh, just a couple of points I want to get over. <coughs> we'll let an M$44 and M$46 equal uh, a comma and a period. That's the, the Morse code for a comma. That's the Morse code for a period. Okay, and then for Q equals 48 to 57, so M$48 to 57, that will then read data from our data statements down here for the first data statement, which contains the Morse code for the numbers, 0 through 9. And it simply puts them into M$Q, where Q alters from 48 to 57. So M$48 is 0, M$49 is 1, M$50 is 2, so on and so forth. Uh, that completes that loop. Then we have another loop, which is exactly the same, just the variables change from 65 to 90 this time. This reads from the second data statement, which contains all the information for the uh, letters A through Z. <coughs> and then that's it, really. That That's set up. That's the first part of the diagram, really. I'll we'll refer back to that. That would be, that bit there that we've done would be sort of um, up there. And that would be there to store the most code into the array. So we've done all that now with that, okay, with that part. Next, we ask for the words to convert to most code. Now, we're using a line input here rather than just an input. You've not come across line input before, but what that basically does is it takes everything that you type in as one item reason I'm doing this is because we're going to put commas in there. We're accepting a comma. And if you type a comma in when you're on a standard input statement in BASIC, it sepa it's a separator. It's, it's, it's viewed as a separator, and it means that you're going to put two or more items in 
we don't want that to happen we want it to accept it all as one item therefore I've had to put line input in which tells it to accept everything as one input the next statement that is um, you've not come across is uppercase or u case okay so we're letting b dollar equal u case dollar of a dollar which basically just means convert a dollar to uppercase letters and stick them in b dollar basically that's all that means other versions of basic use different ones different commands for that so um and one that comes to mind is upper upper dollar uh, that's another one for another uh, version of basic <clears throat> Okay, right, that's the hard bit out of it, just a bit of logic to go through now, then we'll have a quick run of the program and that's it. Line 170, we are creating a loop here, this is our loop from position 1 to the end of a, the length of a dollar, well it's the length of b dollar because b dollar is equal to a dollar, exactly the same, so if we put in, like I said, we put in 10, 10 characters it would go from 1 to 10, if we put 25 characters in it would go from 1 to 25, it basically just loops through whatever you've typed in one position at a time okay here in 180 we are letting v for value equal the ordinal position of b dollar where x changes from one through to the very last character of b dollar so it's taking each position in turn in the string and putting its ascii value into v that's the simplest way of explaining it i think then we're checking to make sure that it's not outside of the range of 32 to 90 if it is then we're just defaulting to a space we could put error traps in here whatever but i've just kept the program simple for you okay so what we're saying is if it's less than 32 32 being the lowest value that we're going to be checking which is a space or it's greater than 90 which is capital z uh, then we're just we're just defaulting to a space instead of printing out the character we'll just print a space out uh, next line checks if it's less than 44 and not equal to 32 okay uh, again, these are a range of, of ASCII values that we do not want, but we want to keep 32 because 32 is a space. That's why we're saying here, if it's less than 44 and it's not equal to 32, in other words, if it was equal to 32, uh, if, I, if I put in there, if it and V is equal to 32, then, then that would negate 32. That would mean 32 is not wanted. But here I've got it, if it's less than 40, 44, and it's not equal to 32 then default to a space um 210 if v equals 45 or 47 the reason we've got that is because we've got 44 and 46 we want there's only one position in each either side of them so 45 and 47 if it's equal to those two values then again we default to a space which is equal to 32 and then lastly we check if v is greater than 57 which is after the numbers but before the capital a starts uh, at 65 so if it's anything between 57 and 65 we don't want that either so again we default to 32 again if you're having any trouble understanding this just refer to the ascii table it will become perfectly clear here we're just letting temporary dollar equal m dollar position v so if, if it was 65 for instance then t dollar would equal m dollar 65 m dollar 65 would actually be equal to that would be there 65 which is the uh, morse code for a so that's what it would equal and then we'll in z dollar which we've dimmed at the beginning which is our output string equal whatever it is we're using an ampersand there to add t dollar to it okay and at the end of every character to make it easy to read what i've done is put um a space there so we're going to give you a space so we put we're adding on an, again a space and then we're nulling t dollar so that we don't get any conflicts and it sets off normal again go back through the loop and go back through all the way through whatever we've typed in however many characters we've gone through these lines are just the data which contains the morse code uh, z dollar prints out at the end which is our output string which gives us the finished product and then we end the program okay let's see if we can give it a run and see what we're going to type in enter the words to convert to morse code okay let's see what can we convert here what can we convert here then hello uh, I'll, what i'll do i'll do a mixture of upper and lower case letters so it doesn't really matter because it converts them all to uppercase anyway hello this is just a test and that is the morse code there guys for 
hello this is a test now hopefully you can see these dots on here uh, there's a dot there dot there dot there I hope you can they are very very faint I'm sorry about that there's nothing I can do I can't alter the font on the output of this of this program but that's the the output for hello this is just a test um, maybe you want to watch this at full screen freeze it or something and have a look uh, if I could make them a little bit better no problem I would have done for you but I can't I don't think you have a problem seeing the dashes but, but the dots you may just have a little bit of a problem with it and we'll also run again and put some numbers in there so I can put um, Davy three four five we can enter that and that is the Morse code for Davy 345 there as I said there's a space between every single character when you get a space on a word then you've got a double space because you've got space at the end of the character plus you've got a space for the space as well okay so I think that really about covers this one guys um, have some fun with that something you could look into doing would be um, to convert put your own sort of and well very simple encryption program so instead of putting morse code there you could jumble up symbols or characters uh, whatever you wanted and you could do something simple so you could do a simple encoder program for your friends or something like that i mean it wouldn't stand up to anything serious but it would be just a bit of fun that maybe that you, your family or friends couldn't crack the code uh, so on and so forth you have a bit of a play about with that if you wished um like i say all this information is on the site i'll put the link in the description I uh, hope you like this video. Please rate and favourite it if you do. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, hopefully see you again soon. Thanks for now. Bye guys.